Hello there and welcome. This is Preeti. In today's video, we're using this home is where the heart is, stem set and dies. And I'm going to create a monochromatic uh, card using a pop of, um, craft card with a pop of color. Um, so it's a very simple card. I just wanted to show you how you could just use one color palette like you've seen here i'm just i've just created a swatch for myself with the copics that i want to use in blue shades and then a pop of color for me in this case is red of course you can um choose any shade of color you like you could make it green yellow purple whatever you like um, the idea is to create a monochromatic theme and when i say monochromatic you can actually take the color blue and uh, implement many different hues of blue to create the monochromatic card. It could be darker shades to the lighter shade. And you will see here, if you look at my palette there, you can see the darker shades of blues and then you also see the really light blue shades uh, of blue as well. And, and that's how I'm going to build this card to, cre to create that singular color or monochromatic color and the pop is of course the red in this case. So I'm starting off here with R, uh, sorry, B39 which is my darkest color and I'm going to choose a few leaves. Now when I'm starting to color I also keep in mind when you're making it you don't necessarily have to color every leaf in the same color combination. So you'll see here, I've started the first set of leaves with B39 and blending it with B29 and that with B26 and B24. Of course, I've used four different shades of color for those tiny leaves. You don't have to. You can just blend them with two colors and they'll blend beautifully. And the reason for that is because the area of the leaf is quite, the surface area of individual leaf is quite small so you can get away with two colors I of course have used two colors yeah um, and now you can see uh, what I'm doing is I'm blending the remaining leaf with B24 which is the lightest color but I'm going to take B26 which was my third color in that uh, blue uh, blue line up on the top and I'm going to start using that as my darkest color for some of the leaves and then I'm going to blend that here you go and then I'm going to blend that with B24 so in this case I'm just using two different colors of blue so you can actually build the hues or the shades of blues just by using four different markers in that color the family of blue and create multiple shades of blue or hues of blue so you can see i started you can make with b39 and b29 you can do b29 and b26 so you can really really um use just four colors and give different shades and when i make any monochromatic cards I like to have variation because that's what creates impact for your for the element for the focal element now when I when I'm finished coloring this entire heart shape here you can see that there's not just one shade of blue but there's different shades of blue and I've just done it with those four markers that I chose so uh, that's one thing that you need to keep in mind when you're making monochromatic cards its idea is to use the same color family so if you were choosing blue then you just do everything blue but you change the shades of the blue or the hues of the blue and the same thing if you were to do purple you take the purple is a color family but you can change the hues of the purple in my case here as i said i've done blue so here i'm just uh, quickly coloring up the remaining blue leaves so i'm coloring only the leaves in this particular uh, stamp set now this stamp set also has some flowers and some hearts and those are the one that i'm going to use red with so again when you use a pop of color you usually it's always nice to use a complementary color so if you were to look at a color wheel and if you look at the blue on the color wheel the red would be exactly opposite to the blue and that is because it is the complementary color and that's the reason why the red is on the opposite side. So if you took violet, yellows, shades of oranges and yellows will be on the opposite side of that color and that is a complementary color. So using a complementary color uh, gives that pop of color if i was to use just the very next color in the color wheel for the blue would be a green then it wouldn't have that much of an impact of that pop of color because 
the blue have some green in them so it's kind of not they don't look as um as vibrant the pop of color wouldn't look as vibrant so it's always nice to use a complementary color when you're choosing uh, a pop of color so here you can see i've chosen red and for the reds i've chosen r59 r46 r24 and r22 and just again as i said i just colored the flowers and the hearts in that heart shape but i'm also using that red color for the tiny house at the bottom again the bottom the the house is a focal part or the central image of this particular uh, stamp set so i'm just want to make sure that i'm highlighting that house there because it's such a tiny house but when i add that pop of color that becomes of a focal image your eye is drawn towards that uh, that beautiful red color that is there so I've, I've just again very simple shading nothing fancy here keeping it from the darkest to the lightest i'm adding the dark color where the shadows would be and then blending it from that point onwards and once i'm done with that there's a tiny chimney there as well and i'm going to color the chimney as well with the same red combination and once i'm done coloring all that red there was few more leaves around the house so i just went ahead and colored that exactly the way i colored the heart leaves as well now there's a little actually uh the the house behind the house there is a bush um so technically you would color it green if you were to color in different colors but because this is monochromatic i wanted to give it like a haze around the uh, house so i created a very i took three shades of really light blue colors so in this case it was b double zero triple zero and quadruple zero and i just blended it from the top from the bottom to the top uh, fading it into the white just to give this beautiful blue haze around that house and i if you look at that last color p tri b tri quadruple zero i even flicked it away like i went outside the lines of that bush area just to give that haze and then i took the coordinating die there and i'm just going to die cut this image using this coordinating um uh, coordinating die because i'm going to use this image to pop up on my card base and here you can see i've gone ahead and die cut that then i'm going to take this vellum here and i'm going to stamp the word heart from the same stamp set onto the vellum using some white embossing ink and i didn't want to use um, a solid cardstock and the reason is because i did all the coloring on that heart and i didn't want to cover it up with the sentiment strips that would block away all that color so i wanted to keep this very subtle so i stamped the heart um with some versafine uh, versamark ink and then embossed it with white embossing powder and i die cut it using a coordinating die which is also part of that uh, coordinating die set and then i also stamped an additional st sentiment and the sentiment reads home is where your heart is um and then I stamped that using a black ink. And the reason I chose black ink is because I went with a black ink for the uh, for the the original stamp as well, the heart stamp as well. So I wanted to pull in that black into my sentiment, and I kept the strip white. So here you can see I just went ahead, stamped it, and cut it into a thin label. And I didn't mind using a thin label for the 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 additional sentiment because that that label was quite thin so it didn't really cover up a whole lot of my colored image there and then i took some uh, foam tape and i put a whole lot of foam tape behind that uh, die cut image because i wanted to make sure that that die cut image stayed flat onto my white cardstock panel that you can see behind it um, and i didn't want it to move or shift if i were to mail this uh well, this card and then once i was done adding the foam tape i just went ahead and removed the backing added some liquid adhesive behind it uh, and then adhered it to my white panel in the center and after I was done adding this to the center of the white panel, I also wanted to add a little bit of a shadow underneath 
that house. I didn't want the house to look like it's floating up in midair, which is also fine, like the movie Up, I suppose. But I wanted there to have some ground to it, mainly because there was plants underneath and things like that. So I wanted to show that it is grounded. So I just took that same blue color that I added behind the house and I blended the same three colors. And here I am so sorry. I don't know what happened. I lost footage. All I did, I just adhered the vellum heart using some liquid adhesive and then the additional sentiment using some uh, foam adhesive and then I also added some gemstones in dark blue color around the home and I am sorry about that that I couldn't show you how I did that but it was very easy and simple then I just took a top folding navy blue cardstock and adhered this directly onto that cardstock using liquid adhesive and that pretty much completed this card I really hope you will give this monochromatic look with a pop of color a go on your next card project if you like this video give us a thumbs up subscribe to our channel and i will see you next time bye bye